All right, let's hit it. Obviously, the main uh, draw of this display is that it's a full 4K um, drawing display with a 183.58 PPI, which we talked about in another video. That's uh, you know amongst the highest, especially in this size, due to the 4K resolution. It is an IPS display, um, most notably with the resolution. That's across all cable types, so HDMI, DisplayPort, uh, USB-C, whatever you're using, and it is 99% Adobe RGB. First cable is HDMI, assuming the uh, 4K HDMI cable. This is a full display port cable, and in the box is a little mini display port to display port adapter. This is a USB C cable. This is a USB A cable. This is a pen holder which will clip on the top. This is the pen holder, we'll look at that in more detail in a second. Once again, the pen holder, it's the same one from the Cintiq Pro 16, and it's quite weighty, meaning you stick your pen in here, it's not gonna move. The bottom of this thing is metal, so it's, it's not gonna easily tip over. The bottom is also magnetic. Now, if you have your Cintiq Pro in the default position, you know, with the legs kicked out, uh, it'll stay on there just fine. If you're using an arm like I am, it's gonna slide off, it's just too heavy. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is if you twist this thing once, it reveals all the spare nibs. But what you're not going to find is you're not going to find a nib remover. And the reason is, is because the nib remover is built into the bottom of here. They want you to stick this in here and kind of twist it and tilt it and then pop the nib out. I'm not really sure I'm that comfortable with that. Um, you know, I, I prefer the old nib remover where, you know, you just pull the thing out. But that's what they want you to use. Second... Uh, this is pretty heavy, like I said. When trying to put this thing back together, um, it's not that intuitive or I'm or, um, just stupid. But either way, I, I wish this would have been a little simpler, you know, maybe a little deeper or something. Because as you can see, even when I just put it back on, it's not even. And my, my OCD. The Express Key Remote included in the 24-inch uh, and the 24-inch touch, along with the uh, USB charging cable. The Express Key Remote has 17 programmable buttons on it with a touch ring for different things like brush size and you know, zoom in, zoom out. Um, all of the other things, radio menu, precision mode, uh, display toggle, things like that are either button presses or through other menus you can bring up um, you know, by pressing one of the keys. It's got a great battery time and I've already done a complete video on using the Express Key Remote and how to use the various functions and I'll link that below. Just like the pen holder, this is magnetic, and the back of this thing is like a like a rubbery feel, so it's not going to scratch the Cintiq. What will happen, though, is because, you know, I have the thing on an arm, and at times the display is upright, it will start to slide. So what I do is I take the USB charging cable, and I leave it plugged in when I'm like that, and it gives just enough resistance so the thing doesn't slide down. And I keep it more towards the bottom anyway, where my fingers will be. Here we have the Pro Pen 2. The Pro Pen 2, 8,192 levels of pressure with an eraser. The tilt range is 40 degrees. The tilt recognition is 60 levels. So in a second, I'm about to misspeak. Uh, there is no battery required. This is EMR, so it's cordless, battery-free. The Pro Pen 2 has two configurable buttons, and it's, it's genuinely, it feels nice in your hands. It's got a soft touch. It's just weighty enough where you feel like the thing's not going to just, you know, float out of your hands. Now, the Pro Pen 2 does support tilt which is different than rotation, which a lot of people get mixed up. So what does that mean? Tilt means I can take the pen and I can tilt it 60 degrees and it's going to register those strokes. So if I'm shading or line weights and things like that, um, it's going to pick it up. Rotation is much different. Rotation is I am rotating the barrel of the pen. And if I had like a bristle brush, it's turning like a real paintbrush. It doesn't support that. Now the display itself supports that, but you're going to need the older I think it's the art pen that does that. Um, now it has less levels of pressure sensitivity and this and that, but if, if it's that important to you, the point is the display supports it. It's just the pen does not. Instructions and such, and a microfiber plug. Finally at the bottom of the box was the uh, brick and the AC power cord. Here's the tablet unboxed, and my first impressions is it is beautiful and it is big. Uh, this is massive with the bezels. 
uh, in a good way. Uh, it's very heavy and it's a very sleek and solid design. Okay, I think I have this uh, pretty well protected. And yes, I am using pink pillows. Um, here are the kickstands in the back, which just pull up. These are the screws we'll talk about uh, later for the uh, VESA mount. You'll need to remove this clip so that you can get the back of this thing off. It doesn't actually slide out. What it is, is there's, there's clips here. So it literally, uh, you're gonna have to force it and it's gonna feel uncomfortable, but you literally have to just snap it up and then slowly wiggle this thing out. So you'll see it's, it's actually clips. The ports are pretty simple. This is USB-C, power, USB-A, uh, display port, HDMI, and they pre-installed the uh, infrared uh, dongle for the uh, express key remote. Now, why this is important is if you decide to mount this, uh, you're never gonna get that thing out of it. So if you choose to use the express key remote on other devices, like I use it on my laptop and you know, with even other um, you know, tablet makers, uh, you, you wanna make sure that that thing's available. So just take it out and pop it into the side of your PC or on the side of the Cintiq if you wanna move it around. So on each side of the uh, device, you have two USB uh, A ports where you could plug the express uh, key remote in or whatever else you want. Um, on the left side, which is a, a, a great feature, is um, a headphone jack, which I actually found um, I'm using more than I ever thought I would. And finally on the right side is a full SD card reader, so you can transfer files very easily with the device. Uh, what these are, these are open ports for ventilation and where the fans are. I do have to confirm that the fan noise is there. Now I can't make any rhyme or reason for it. It doesn't kick on when the display kicks on right away. It seems to take 10 or 15 minutes or even longer than that. And it's not consistent. So depending on the temperature of the room, the, the temperature outside, um, really impacts the way these fans kick on and off. Now at first, it really bugged me, if I'm being honest, but my PC is louder than that. And generally I have on some music or, or something that it, it eventually just fades into the ambiance. Uh, I reached out to Wacom about it. I even took a video just to make sure there was nothing wrong. And they told me the fan noise I was experiencing was in a sort of acceptable limits for them. When the fans are kicking on, the display in the front of it doesn't get warm at all. Like it doesn't get warm at all. You can work on this thing and there's no hot spots or anything like that. If you put your hand on the back though, you could feel that heat. Now, if you had the Cintiq engine on top of that, and that's a full high-end PC running, I have to figure that to compensate for all that heat, they had to have these fans going. I wish there was and asked them for an option, maybe in the driver so that it would sense or you could tell it, hey, I don't have a Cintiq engine in here. It's just a display, turn these fans off. Update, they did it. Check down below for the link on the fix and the new firmware and how to use it. Now, when I did uh, adjust the brightness, because that seems to be the, the latest or at least the most current information on how to get these fans to kick off, I wound up cranking it up to 100% and I thought I was freaking blind. So uh, unless you're in a really bright, bright office or outside, I, I can't see that, you know, in an application. But um, I tend to run my brightness at about 50%. And I'm not in the brightest room, but as you can see behind me, you know, when these windows are open, I mean, it can get pretty, you know, bright in here when these blinds are open. The VESA mount. So the VESA mount was a little bit of a sore spot for me, if I'm being honest. And this goes back to some of my earlier videos, even, you know, complaining about the fact that this thing did not have VESA screws in it. But I'll give Wacom credit. People complained about it and they came out with the VESA adapter. And I have a video for that. I'll link it below and they'll have the little pop out come out and I show you how to use it and all that stuff. All right, so let's just test touch uh, for a second. Uh, one of the things I see people doing is they, they don't wear a, a smudge guard. So when your palm is against the actual display, uh, you know, it's gonna get all sent, get all screwy. So, you know, typically with a, with a smudge guard, as long as your pen is off the canvas, the touch is gonna respond really well. Now. In some of the tests I see people doing, what they do is they take their fingers and they're going all crazy all over the place. I find that the Cintiq touch works best when you're just doing the immediate movement that you need. So in other words, I'm drawing, right? And I just need to pinch and zoom. So I'm gonna pinch and zoom. And my pen is not against the display, so it works fine. Then I'm gonna draw, okay? 
and then I'm gonna pinch in again to get it where I want it. Now I have, you know, some keyboard, or sir, my express key remote set up to go back to different settings and stuff like that in case I get lost, but the point is if I wanna rotate now, okay, once my two fingers are there, and then I lift off, I usually get an accurate response. And then I'm gonna draw again and you know, what have you and hold on, let's just get the pen cursor where it needs to be. There we go. So once again, I wanna go back to 100. So I'm drawing, I'm drawing, I'm drawing. I lift my pen, my smudge guard is on. I take my two fingers and I rotate where I want to. And you can see by the demonstration, it works every time. So I think it, once again, if, if during your test, you're going to be going in and, you know, messing around, you see there, it starts to get hokey. If, if I'm doing too fast movements, it may start to get a little screwy, but in, in real life, you're not going to use it like that. Right? So I want to get back this back to straight or close to it. As long as I move it, you know, slowly enough, you know, I'm going to get back to where I want to, and then quickly get back to work. The one thing I did reach out to Wacom about regarding touch is I did seem to have an issue where the Cintiq doesn't really like it being in extended mode. In other words, it wants to be the primary display, otherwise touch is registering on the other display. I did some research and it looks like that's sort of a, a legacy thing with them. Uh, it doesn't bother me that much, I just switched the Cintiq to primary, but it's something to consider if you're going to get the touch. Overall, I found touch useful. That's why I got the touch model. Um, I like the express key remote and the things it offers and it's it's completely serviceable, including rotate, zoom, everything like that. I mean, I just prefer it in my workflow or when I'm doing different things, I've got this nice big display. So when I wanna open a folder or sometimes, you know, when I just don't wanna put the pen down, I wanna click file open or whatever, it's really nice to just be able to do that on screen. And I found the Cintiq accurate in that regard. I didn't find it all over the place or not registering my fingers or anything like that. I did test for dead pixels. I didn't find any. I used a couple of different web-based utilities to check it out first thing out of the box and I haven't found any. So I know that was a thing earlier in the year that people were complaining about. I personally haven't had that problem. And when I talk to Wacom support, which I do quite often, uh, just for communication purposes, they have no tolerance for dead pixels. So if it shouldn't be a thing. If you order your Cintiq and it comes with a bunch of dead pixels or a couple, they're gonna exchange it for you. So to me, not a deal breaker. It shouldn't even be part of the conversation. I've had a couple different questions already about color, you know, comparing to other models and this and that. And look, this is a Cintiq Pro. This is gonna be, this is their newest model and it's gonna be a top of the line and, and top of the chart for it. This is the most accurate and wide color gamut they've ever had on a display. It's even better than the 16 inch Pro. So you can't do better than this if you're asking about color. The matte screen does its job, it's end to end. It reflects the light great. I don't find that it washes out the screen too much and it gives just enough tactile feedback where it doesn't feel like you're drawn on paper, but it feels much better than drawn on like glossy glass, like an iPad or something like that. On Parallax too, because you know, some people, even reviewers don't understand it. So Parallax is the, the distance between the pen and the glass. Okay, that's what, what, what Parallax is. How you experience it, meaning you have your pen and the cursor is offset somewhat because you're seeing the space between the glass. Now, as opposed to the Pro 16, you'll see as I'm showing on the screen now, there is some parallax. So obviously when you're going from a laminated screen on a 13 inch or a 16 inch, this is a 24 inch and the glass is end to end. So it's even bigger than that. It's probably the size of a you know 27 inch display. So it's just physics people. It's just impossible to get glass that thin. Now, that said, compared to other displays of this size, this is among the best I've ever seen. Okay, and you can see from the channel I've tested them. So for a 24 inch display, the parallax is almost non-existent. It's better than the previous 24 HD. It's better than the 22 HD. It's better than some of the Cintiq alternatives I reviewed over the, you know, the years. And for a 24 inch, I'm, I'm happily surprised. It's caused me no issues. This is EMR. You're gonna have some of that, but I will gladly trade a slight bit of, of parallax for the accuracy that this pen has. 
All right, so we're gonna get into Sketchbook Pro a little bit and do a little doodling and just see um, how our Cintiq holds up here. Get this brush right. Yeah, that's good. All right, I'm gonna try to use the touch features as much as I can to just, you know, you know, highlight when they are and when they're not working, but. So pencils feel great. Um, you know, you, I, I can feel just a little bit of, it's, it's almost like a scratchy feeling as if you were drawing on a texture. Just give this, I'm not going to go too crazy, but. This guy's got abs for days. Okay. There he goes. He's a little Santa Claus guy, right? All right, so. Next thing we like to do is we like to test, uh, you know, the pressure sensitivity. And I mean, I'm not gonna go too crazy because we're going to the applications, but. Let's do a quick, we're going to get to a line with no pressure. All right, and do our ruler test. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's about perfect. That's about as good as I've ever seen. So, um, I'm not going to do that again. I think that that's perfectly fine. So all good in Sketchbook Pro. Now, generally, we don't really go into navigation or anything like that, but um, because of the touch, I want to show you how I'm getting around in Windows to launch Clip Studio Paint and how accurate it is. So I'm, I'm getting right in, you know, these are small icons because of the 4K, but I'm not having any issue navigating at all. The first thing we'll do in Clip Studio Paint is the line test. I just had to make sure I turned all the pressure sensitivity and stabilization off this brush. Once again, that is a beautiful, perfect line. So I'm not gonna go and do a bunch of them because I think we are probably good to go. Now, if I draw it by hand, obviously my hand's gonna shake. And again, I'm off, off center here, but generally, 
These lines are smooth, they're straight, and they're consistent. So that's what we're looking for. So we're gonna Okay, so we're gonna do a uh, really quick just pressure test since the line test is good. And I'm gonna do it here, so hopefully I'm applying. Decent, consistent pressure. You can see these are all consistent. There's no shoelace effect. Um, these lines taper off perfectly. And I get some really nice thick to thin. We'll just lighten it up here. And you can see what I did here was I pulled off so that I could try to get more of a um, more of a clean break instead of taper off. But I mean, if you look at the brush, and that's my man, uh, John Rector. Scribbles with Jonathan, check him out um, on YouTube. That's his brush that I'm using. So uh, the, the end of it's just gonna taper. That's just the way that it is. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I'm going to move on to Photoshop now. We're in Photoshop here and I have a little uh, Hulk drawing I'm working on. And um, just to show once again how the, the touch features work, um, we're just going to doodle around a little bit. First, I'm going to take this off. This is a small seven pixel brush. I took all the smoothing and whatnot off it and all the pressure. A little bit faster. I mean, those lines are absolutely beautiful. So I, I'm not going to waste uh, any more time with, with slow lines. I mean, they're, they're perfectly straight. That's really very hard to actually uh, draw and concentrate on the review at the same time, but uh, I'll do the best that I can. But forgive the, uh, the drawing as I try to show some of the, the features, especially in regards to touch. I just want to highlight really quick, although I have a video for the express key and take you through all the customization options uh, available, if I just bring up the radial menu um, and bring up the screen keys, and then finally the keypad, you can see all the different options I have available. And by the way, all these things, you can pin them. So you can pin them to your screen and it, any shortcuts you want on here especially with the resolution you have so much screen space it's it's not a big deal now to have a couple of these things pinned and they really don't get in your way so wanted to show that and finally on the um the touch buttons on the display itself 
Uh, the first one turns touch on and off. Uh, the second one brings up those display settings, which I'm not going to hit because it gives me the willies. Uh, this one is for on-screen keyboard, which can come in handy. Uh, this one brings up the Wacom Display Center or the Wacom Desktop Center, sorry. And this one is uh, Display Toggle. So all in all, there's a number of different ways you can uh, configure your Cintiq any which way you want. I like the included on-screen um, you know, commands so that I don't have to buy another one, but honestly, with a display this, this big, uh, you know, really who needs it? So here's my final thoughts on this. What can you say? I mean, the question is always out there is, is it worth the price? Well, I mean, it's subjective. This is the best you're gonna get. I mean, it's it's not really close between the color, a 4K screen that's beautiful, the, the PPI, um, they include every cable you could ever want and they're high quality cables they're not cheap cables they're thick they're nice they're long they're probably 10 feet long or something like that the express key remote is included and if you have the bucks you could even get a built-in you know pc for it so you don't need another pc now when it comes to the drawing experience itself uh, i mean to me emr is the best and these guys have been doing it forever so this is the best implementation of EMR you're going to find. It's also the newest devices. So when you're talking about like cost versus, uh, you know, performance, at that point, it almost doesn't matter. You either are going to pony up, you know, the 2000 plus or whatever for the device or you're not. Um, to me, if, if you're a person who has to have the best, whether it's a hobbyist type of thing or it's for your job, you're just not going to get better than a Cintiq at this point in time it's, it's just that simple so for me uh it's well worth it uh except for you know I, the little nitpicks that i have are the fan noise and you know things like that and not including the, you know the vessel screws to begin with which makes sense when you take it out of the box they've attempted to be all things to all people so in that regard people are going to have different things that they don't like about it for me i love the device love this device from a drawing perspective, it met every expectation for me. Uh, the touch isn't perfect, but it, it's a lot better than I thought it was going to be after reading some of the early reviews. All in all, great package, very pricey. Again, we all know that, but to me, it's a solid buy with a solid support staff that is dedicated to making sure that these things perform the way they're supposed to. I email them all the time, they get back to me. Solid job by Wacom. I definitely think it's worth it from a performance standpoint. For the pricing standpoint, that's a judgment call. You have to sort of, you know, make that judgment for yourself. But I look forward to any new products that might be coming out with. I'm really looking forward to hopefully a new mobile studio soon. Keep your eyes on this channel. Please hit that bell to be notified when new videos come out. Otherwise, you're going to miss all the great words I have to say. And uh, subscribe and like, and I'll see you guys in the next one.